Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Okay, I am done with Transformers. I have a solution. And, uh, it's working. And you were hearing that from the ICOM 705, which is just sitting here with an open-ended connection up here. There's no antenna hooked up to the port I'm switched to. It's just picking the RF up that's coming off this little load resistor and the probe cable. But you can hear the keying is nice and quick. And clean. So uh, let me move the camera up overhead and we'll talk about the transformer. Okay, so this is just the transmit path. It's the, the Arduino, the clock generator, the 74-244 octoline driver, all eight stages parallel to give us the maximum current the chip can deliver. A 0.1 microfarad cap, 100 nanofarad, 0.1 microfarad, uh, to pass and couple the signal to couple the signal from the chip to the transformer, which will then go to the low-pass filter, which I don't have on the breadboard. This is just a 50-ohm resistor I was using as a load to measure the output from the transformer. And this is a commercial part. SWB1040-PCL. Available from Mauser Electronics for about seven bucks. I picked up a couple of them. Here's the little envelope from Mauser. Um, I wound a whole bunch of transformers. Uh, I used a T50-43, type 43 core, and I got a good working transformer design with a turns um, count of 5 on the primary and 10 on the secondary. And uh, what I did, this is terrible. I should do graphics for this. In fact, I probably will. Um, but the uh, secondary takes about half the core, and then I wound the primary over the top of the secondary on the same half of the core, and that gave me the best output. And I got about half a watt. So you can wind your own. Um, oh, and Harry over at Zactech, he also did some experiments and came up with a uh, similar uh, output using a binocular ferrite core with a turns ratio of one to four. One primary, four on the secondary. So there are some options if you want to wind your own transformer and if you don't you can just buy this part and this does work. I'm getting about a half a watt across it. So it's a nice little dip package, four pins. The secondary is on, the pin one is up in this corner here the secondary is uh, on these two and the primary is on these two. So you just ground one of each and then your input and your output and that works. So I'm going to update the schematic today with that information. And I'm sure that a lot of people are just going to buy the part because, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people don't like winding toroids. Although it's not that tough, they just don't like doing it. Now, um, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start building onto a protoboard the final transmitter. And I've got these, uh, this double-sided PC board kit from Elegoo. Comes in several sizes. I'm using the larger one, which is, uh, oh, it's upside down. Well, I don't know how they... <laughs> 7 asterisk 9 cm, 7 by 9 centimeters, I guess. Yeah, probably 7 by 9 centimeters. Grab my ruler. So, 7. Okay, no, it's uh, 7 by 5 centimeters or 2 and uh, almost 3 quarters. Yeah, 2 and 3 quarters by almost two inches. And that's pretty small 
to fit all of this on there plus the low pass filter and the relay but I think I can do it I'm pretty sure I can do it and that will make the the case for this will be just slightly larger than the PC board and the PC board I'm gonna do a 3d printed case that this will sit in it might also fit in an Altoids tin let me see Altoids tin yeah it could be made to fit in an Altoids tin so this is a good size to go with. The trick is going to be getting these components plus a low-pass filter and a relay on there. So the first thing I need to do is figure out the board layout. So let me get these components off the breadboard, go find the relay, and we'll work on a, on a PC board layout. Figure out where I'm going to put everything and then I can make the wiring connections between. Well, it's going to be really tight. Um, after a bit of fiddling and thinking, I think it's going to be super tight. And uh, mm, there's one other issue that I don't know if I can do. Where did I put that thing? This, uh, I think, was an LED um, string power supply. But it's got this nice barrel connector on it. And I was thinking about putting that on there as well. But that's kind of deep. I'll take it off this board. You know, I'll take it off this PC board. But uh, it's kind of deep. I don't know. I'd have to move the relay over. Oh no. Everything's just sitting in the holes. That's why I had it sitting up on this, these needle nose pliers to keep the voltage regulator from popping off. That's okay. I'll just do this. Okay. Yeah, that might just sit in there that way. Okay. Then the question is, do I have enough room in this gap right here to fit one, two, three in of these T50 Type 6 cores, which will be the low pass filter. There's be one there. That's awfully tight. I might have to. No, I can't move the 74 over anymore. This PC board might not cut it. Ah. Mm. Super tight. One problem is this breakout board pin header is here and it occupies a whole finger width of PC board space. And I was planning on putting the relay driver transistor underneath that flat on the board because it'll hook to the relay at this end and it'll just have a resistor and the transistor I've got the 0.1 microfarad cap that will couple the uh, output from the chip to the transformer that'll fit in there okay the output of the transformer over here can go right into the low pass filter which I'll have the one inductor there the other one there and the final one there it's gonna be super tight <laughs> but I think I can fit it all on this board it's just gonna be a serious pain to uh, wire it up I'll need to find a smaller electrolytic for the input on the power supply and I think that connector will fit there Right up against the relay, it'll overhang the board slightly, which is fine. I can design the 3D printed case to slot that in. That'll just fit in there. I'll be doing some of the wiring on the bottom. Of, I'll be doing a lot of the wiring on the bottom of the PC board to connect all these things. Actually, I can move everything down a set of pins, I think. Yeah, I can move everything down one set of pins so I can buy a little more space. 
I almost want to put this up at an angle to free up this space down here, but then that would make the I'd have to make the box bigger, taller, and it would preclude putting it in an Altoids tin. Um, one of my viewers is going to make a PC board design for the circuit, and uh, it'll be orderable through a company that will provide um, the PC boards with the parts mounted on them. So a lot of people will probably just go that route, and he's going to make that, that design available so people can order it. I'm going to build it onto this PC board, and this is going to be super tight and, and tricky. And it's going to take me quite a while, because <laughs> I can hardly see what I'm doing. I was having a hard time lining up the pins on these holes just to get the components into this board. Even with a magnifying lens, my eyes are getting so bad, this is really tough. But I think I can make this work. It's just going to be really dense and tight. But that's going to be the PC board layout. So I guess the next thing to do is to uh, get the solder station out and uh, start soldering things up, wiring it all up. I'm going to have to make little short wire connections between pins here and there. And the wiring around that 74LS chip is really going to be tricky because you've got to join all the inputs and outputs together on the proto board or the breadboard you can see all these wires to join all those pins together but I think I can join like the uh, outputs all together underneath the, the socket underneath the chip on the bottom side of the PC board and then just do the jumpers for the out inputs on the top here through these holes at the top and then it's just a short connection from one of those to clock one or clock zero output on one of these pins here which I think it's yeah you know, it's this pin right here so that's short power supply is this 7805 over here it's got to have an electrolytic on the input side and a uh, what did I use 0.01 cap on the output side yeah to keep it stable so that'll have to fit in there too I have the Arduino with its USB port over here against the edge of the board because I plan on having a hole in the case so I can plug a USB cable into it to update and tweak and fiddle with the software once it's all together. And then the key jack is going to mount in the case over here. It'll be above the board. The uh, tuning up and down buttons. I'm not sure where I'm going to put those yet. I might put one on either side of the case. So you just come out here with your fingers and go tap, 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 tap to tune it. Or I might make the case tall. I might put this board vertical to free up all this space underneath it. And then, uh, why would that make the case? The case would have to be a little over an inch tall, maybe about an inch and a half tall. So our box would be that tall. That's okay. Maybe I'll do that. I think that'll solve a lot of my problems. I'm going to bend these header pins at a right angle so I can put this breakout board. Come out of there. Come out of there. Up at an angle. Like that. If I bend these down at a 90 degree angle. And I can put that like that. And it'll make, well, you know, the 7805 is that tall anyway? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. That gives me more space to work with down here. I can have the low pass filter start over here and then extend around the relay to where it makes its connection to the relay over here. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So the case will have to be at least that tall. That's fine. Yeah. That gives me plenty of room to work. Then I can get my power connector in here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I got my PC board layout figured out. Uh, and I've got it on video so I can take a picture of this and use it as a mental reminder while I start doing the build. So here we go. Next video, I'll have the solder station out and I'll be talking you through some of the steps of this as I solder everything together. And we'll get this thing done. Yay! See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.